Yo, what's going on guys? It's Seabrav. Welcome to another MLB The Show 20 video. In this one, I'm going to be doing a comprehensive guide on the new Mike Trout collection that just dropped in-game. I wanted to wait a couple days and make sure this was a super high-quality video for y'all. Uh, so if you could please drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new, that would be much appreciated. This video did take a lot of work. Uh, what we're going to be doing in this one, we're going to be discussing how to get Mike Trout, uh, namely the sections of the vouchers. We're going to be breaking down every single category of vouchers and describing the most efficient way to get them done in both in terms of money and time. So we're going to be breaking down basically the best approach how to do this collection as it stands right now. Obviously cards from every category will be continue to be added throughout the year. Um, but as far as like a week one guide, this is the best I got. So let's dive right into it. So I'm sure most of you guys have seen this by now, but the Mike Trout collection requires 15 of these uh, unlockables to be collected in order to unlock the card. Here's how the card looks. Uh, looks insane. <laughs> it can be prestiged as well, uh, which means he'll get diamond defense anywhere in the outfield, which is pretty hype. Insane card, very excited. Um, but yeah, there's 15 of these that you need and there's 18 currently available in the game right now. Now one of those 18 is tops now and is not currently able to be finished because they haven't put out enough players to do the collection yet. So if you're looking for a cheap alternative um, to do one of these categories, start stocking up on these tops now players as they come out. Eventually you'll basically get this voucher done for free and you can skip one of the least or the less efficient categories that I'll be doing towards the end of the video. I'm going to be doing these categories basically from easiest to hardest, most efficient to least efficient. So tops now, you can't do it right now, but if in your, if you're in no rush for Mike Trout, then make sure you're grabbing all the tops now cards that come out. Uh, once you have 15 of them, I believe you will be able to get that voucher for very cheap. So that's a good alternative. As it stands, if you want Mike Trout right now, you only have 17 options and you need 15. And if you don't have five prestige cards done, then you only have 16 options and you need 15. So that's really limiting you there. Let's talk about each individual category, easiest to hardest, what you should be targeting, how to get them done efficiently. Also should mention before we dive into the categories, by the way, I'm on the stub stipend or my no money spent account. That's why I don't have any of this done, but I wanted to do it on an account where I didn't have the stuff done so you could see everything. But in my personal opinion, if you're going for the Mike Trout collection before you get Mickey Mantle, I feel like a little bit you're putting the cart before the horse. Um, I think you should try to do Mantle first if you can. I understand the argument that you can build a better team around Mike Trout by doing the Mike Trout collection first, but the Mickey Mantle collection is really going to help with a lot of the lesser categories, the Rookie Breakout All-Star Veteran. Um, and if you do Mike Trout first and then decide to do Mickey Mantle later, you're kind of overlapping and you're wasting essentially 30 cards that are going to be locked in extra that you didn't need. So try to get Mickey Mantle done first if you can. The collection is still worth it. It's always worth it. All three of these cards are amazing. Try to do Mickey first. That's my advice. Starting with the easiest voucher is the cover series voucher. You only need two of these and not three, so you don't need to have pre-ordered the game. I can't imagine why they would make it so you would have. <laughs> but in order to get two of these cards and get the voucher done, you need to be the XP level of gold 85 or higher. As a general rule for this as well, the higher XP you are, the easier collections become. So if you have been slacking on your XP, that may be a good way to get some cheap cards. And you may actually wait on some of these categories until you can hit XP milestones. Should mention the cover voucher included that the first eight categories that I'm going over are some of the easiest slash most efficient ones and kind of ones that you have to do no matter what. So uh, cover was one of them. Next is monthly awards. There's really no getting around this one. Just try to knock out as much of each of the four monthly awards as you can. Um, getting the bosses is really efficient if you're going to do the prestige grind as well because Cody Bellinger, uh, James Paxton, and Didi Gregorius all have fairly easy prestige grinds compared to uh, some of the other cards in the game when you consider the stats that are required to prestige them. So uh, definitely worth it to do monthly awards. You only need 15 to lock them in. You should have plenty. Uh, but in general, you probably just want to finish every monthly awards program that comes out. Just finish it all the way. Next up is Players League. There's really no getting around this one either. Even though it costs stubs, it costs significantly less stubs than some of the other categories. So you're going to need six of these cards locked in to complete the Blake Snell program. Uh, four of these are selling for around 10k right now. 
and so you would get those four for 40k and then you can get two of these higher tier cards they're selling for about 30k so overall as it stands prices right now collections uh, for this specific voucher costs about 100k now this may go down they may get resupplied usually they put players league packs and like conquests and event rewards so there's definitely a chance that these go down in price uh, but you're gonna have to do this collection that'll give you 30 points towards the Blake Snell program and the collection for the Blake Snell program doesn't actually get you what you need for Mike Trout you actually have to complete the entire program in order to get this Blake Snell because this Blake Snell is what's required for Mike Trout so the collection will get you 40 points these available moments will get you 50 points so that'll put you at 90 and then for the last 10 um, these two online missions give 10 points each so you can do one of these or you can do two of these offline missions the collection isn't everything but it's pretty much everything in terms of stubs that you need to complete the players league part of the Mike Trout collection next is gold and silver prospects this one is pretty easy as well um, you need 16 of these 15 if you've done Tebow which is from one of the conquest maps uh, but these are all obtainable at 25 points in the first stage of a team affinity so uh, you can do 15 stage 1 team affinities to get these gold cards if you have Tebow you can do 16 if you don't have Tebow and in order to get to 25 points in a stage 1 affinity you can do like one showdown in one moment that would get you there team affinity progress will help a ton as we move forward through the video in terms of saving stubs but it does take a lot of time it takes a lot of showdowns but there's really no getting around it if you want to do this collection you got to have at least 25 points in 15 or 16 of these team affinities and rounding out the easier categories we have rookie breakout all-star and veteran uh, these are the categories that having Mickey Mantle done is really going to help you out a lot because a lot of these cards are like divisional or team rewards from uh, collecting the teams the live series teams so that'll really help you a ton a lot of these cards are from XP or from uh, purchasable market the more XP you have the more Mickey collections you have done the easier these four will be I'm not going to dive into specifics for each of these four categories uh, if you don't have Mickey done this is gonna be really expensive you're gonna be overpaying for a lot of golds and diamonds that you probably aren't gonna use uh, in order to finish these because you don't have the help from the collections but it's still possible also make sure to check player programs uh, because a lot of these cards are rewards for player programs something like uh, this Andre Dawson was a player program It's just a free card you can get so Rookie breakout all-star veteran. You're just gonna have to suck it up if you've done Mickey You should be okay. These shouldn't cost you a lot if you haven't done Mickey These are gonna cost you significantly more but still Definitely required and you notice I left out postseason and that's for a reason. We'll get to that at the end of the video these next three categories are still required in my opinion there's no getting around doing them however they are much more painful in terms of stubs or time than the ones we've covered already so <laughs> these are gonna be the signature series the prime series and the award series those three categories much more painful but you need to do them and here's where you can kind of take control I guess of what you want to lock in you can either target the cheapest ones and just lock them in to get Mike Trout as cheaply as possible or you can target guys that will most likely be on your team uh, for a long time or cards that are considered in game so I'm talking about like this Heraldus Chapman even though he's much more expensive than some of the other cards you can lock in uh, in all likelihood Chapman's gonna be in most people's bullpen for the rest of the year so you, in my opinion, I'm locking in more expensive cards that I know I'll use rather than locking in cheap cards that I'm probably not going to use. It should also be mentioned with Signature Prime and Awards, especially uh, if you're planning on prestiging any of these cards that are prestige eligible, keep that in mind because you're going to have to lock the cards in anyway for the prestige program. So you might as well double dip and have them locked in for Mike Trout as well. So if you're planning on doing prestige programs, make sure you're locking these guys in to the collection as well. Signature series really isn't that bad. You, Everyone should have this Edwin. He's from like the easiest showdown ever made. So really you only need seven of these because Edwin is, is free and easy. You can get Hal and you can get Sandberg from XP. You can get Jackie from a program and you can get Biggio from the live series collections if you've done that. So if you do all of those, you're already at five out of eight. And like I said, consider locking in end game cards or cards that you're planning on doing prestigious for. So potential end game cards, Rollins, Maddox, Rivera, Walker, Chapman. If any of those guys 
pique your interest and you imagine using them for the rest of the year, then it's probably worth it just to lock them in, even if they cost more, obviously depending on how many stubs you have. So that's the approach. You can either go as cheap as possible or you can lock in some guys that you're going to end up using for a long time. For Prime Series, you need 15 of these, and this one is a little bit more pricey. There's a lot less free cards available, but we can break this down in terms of cards that you should have for the for cheap or free. So starting off, Mark Reynolds is a player program. That should be an easy one to knock out. Ken Griffey Sr. was also a Father's Day program for the fourth inning program, so you can knock that out as well. That's two free cards. Also, Reggie Jackson, Mini Minoso from the XP Reward Path, and Mickey Mantle, if you have him done, is a prime card as well. Keep in mind, and I'll keep reiterating this as we go into the Award Series cards as well, that cards that come from the Ducks on the Pond pack, or the Home Run Derby pack, or the X Headliner pack, have all had flash sales before, and therefore if they do another flash sale, these cards will tank in price temporarily, and that'll be a very good opportunity for you to get these done for cheap. Also, these are generally more the cheaper options for these categories just because there's been so many of them because of these flash sales. So Dave Kingman, Fernando Rodney, and Orlando Hernandez from the Ducks on the Pond Pack. Jake McGee, Pablo Sandoval, Rob Dibble, Michael Brantley, and Matt Kemp all from the X Headliner Pack if they do that flash sale. And we have the Prestige Eligible cards. If you're going to work on a card's Prestige, you got to lock them in anyway, like I said. These are Oswald, Carter, Roberts and Jacoby Ellsbury for the prime. For cheap options that you're probably just gonna end up having to buy anyway, Dini Martinez, Johnny Cueto, and Brett Gardner all came out recently. They're fairly cheap. And locking in cards that are in-game that you could see yourself using for the rest of the year. Some of these options, in my opinion, Zach Britton, Pablo Sandoval, Rob Dibble, all debatably in-game cards. So if you want like some of the best cards in the game, even though these cost more, they're probably worth locking in. In general, for these SIG Prime and Awards, you want to avoid X World Series rewards, X Event rewards, and uh, 12 and OBR rewards, because those are going to be the most expensive just based on basic principles of supply and demand. So staying away from Juan Pierre, staying away from Shinsu Chu. Juan Pierre was X World Series, Shinsu Chu was an event reward. Uh, who else we got? You Darvish was an event reward, Brian Dozier. All these event cards are very expensive right now, so try to stay away from those. The last required but painful category is awards. You need 15 of these as well. Raleigh Fingers, Corey Kluber, Buster Posey, and Barry Larkin come from the XP reward path and Gary Sheffield comes from the Live Series collection if you've done Mickey Mantle. So depending on where you're at, you could have already knocked out five out of these 15 awards cards. Daniel Murphy, Salvador Perez, Zach Greinke, and Andrew McCutcheon come from the Ducks on the Pond Pack. Ozzy Smith, Jason Hayward, JD Martinez, Charlie Blackman, Matt Wieters, Paul Molitor, Brett Saberhagen, Chris Bryant, Yadier Molina, and Mike Scott, all are X headliners. So I mentioned the Ducks on the Pond and the X headliner packs again, just in case we get flash sales. These are the cards that are going to tank the most in price. Corey Seeger's 150 star reward for the current sixth inning program. So this one's pretty much required. He's super cheap right now. You're probably going to have to get him no matter what. And Shane Victorino, Felix Hernandez, Stan Musial, David Ortiz are all prestige eligible cards. Once again, if you're gonna prestige someone, they're locked in anyway, so make sure you're double dipping. Also, in terms of end game cards, uh, you can make the argument for a lot of these purchase purchasable cards, but in my opinion, uh, the most in-game looking card that maybe costs a lot, but it's maybe worth it, is this Ernie Banks down at the bottom. Once again, we're trying to avoid event rewards, World Series rewards, and 12 and 0 BR rewards. This Andrelton Simmons and Justin Upton are a little more expensive than what they're worth just because they're event rewards, and they're only going to go up in price after the event's over. George Foster, X World Series reward. Dustin Pedroia, World Series reward. Manny Machado, 12 and 0 reward. You just want to stay away from these cards in general. Uh, for this collection. They just cost way too many stubs for what they're worth to be locking them in. So that's pretty much it for the the awards cards. A lot of potential to just knock out this entire category if we get flash sales similar to what we got in the past. That would be huge. So look, be on the lookout for that. Now I'm not going to dive into prestige cards in this video because I'm going to make an entirely separate video about the quickest and most efficient prestige cards to go for if you're going to knock this out. Keep in mind, if you're prestige 5 or higher, you're going to be getting one of these prestige cards for free because in the prestige XP reward path, you get prestige cards of the original XP rewards like Ryan Sandberg, Mini Minoso, 
here they are. So if you're Prestige 95, you have all five of them, you don't have to do any grinding. So depending on where your XP is at, could be easy, could be hard, but uh, in general I think Prestige is worth it as a category if you're willing to play online because you can save yourself some stubs in another category. Now, faces of the franchise and future stars. This is where we're going to have to make some tough choices. This is where you could go one of two directions. Um, if you're not willing to grind a bunch of team affinities, then future stars is not really possible as a category. So keep that in mind. Uh, you may have to use it as one of your one or two freebies. As I talked about earlier in the video, we're kind of at 17 or 16 available categories, and you need 15. So maybe you use future stars as one of them if you're not willing to grind a bunch of team affinities to 120 points. But let's start with face of the franchise. Your options are grind all stage one team affinities for these 30 cards. That'll knock it out. Again, you need, I might have mentioned this earlier, you need 30 face of the franchise for the nameplate. You need 30 future stars for the nameplate. And the two nameplates are what go in the Mike Trout collection. So you can do 30 stage one team affinities and get these face of the franchise rewards. You can buy the 30 stage three team affinities off the market and lock them in, but that's gonna cost a ton of stubs or you can do a combination of the two. Now, if you're gonna do a combination of the two, it's really important that you do at least 17 stage one team affinities if you're going to buy some of them instead of just getting all 30 for free through the affinity program. You need to still grind at least 17 of them and preferably you would want to grind 19 of them. And this is very important for when we get to the future stars because if you grind stage one for an affinity for my Trout's collection, you might as well knock out stage two since you're already started. So ideally, if you're gonna do a combination of purchasing and playing, you wanna do 19 uh, stage one team affinities up to 50 points. And ideally, in terms of stubs, you would just grind every single team affinity to 50 points and you would just get 30 face of the franchise that way. Now the reason 17 face of the franchise from affinities is required and 19 is preferred is because of this future stars collection. There's 13 obtainable future stars that are not in the team affinities. Two of them come from the XP reward path. You're looking at them here, Victor Robles and Alex Reyes. These come from the classics pack, the classics choice pack from the XP reward path. So there's two. And then there's 11 purchasable future stars in the game right now. Now that we'll probably add some more, but as it stands right now, there's only 11 purchasable and only nine of them are below 100K and this Casey Mize is currently selling for like 400,000 stubs. So that's why I say it's preferred to do 19 face of the franchise through Team Affinity instead of 17, but uh, 17 is absolutely the minimum if you're going to do a combination. Obviously, the most stub efficient way is to just do all 30 Team Affinities up to 120 points. That would give you free 30 faces of the franchise and free 30 future stars. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of showdown. I completely understand if you want to skip this category. I'm just telling you what's required of it. These final three categories are the least efficient, the, the ones that cost a ton of stubs and you don't really get a lot in return, but still probably required at least one or two of them to get Mike Trout. These are the most painful collections. So starting with prospects, you actually only need 19 prospects because you need Wander Franco for the Mike Trout collection. And uh, the McKenzie Gore and Dylan Carlson that you get along the way actually count in the collection. You can see them here. Here's Gore, here's Carlson. So you really only need to buy 19 prospect cards. Uh, this is gonna cost you around 300K as it stands right now and you basically get nothing in return. None of these cards are really usable anymore with the game state. Uh, a lot of these guys' better cards are just future stars now. Keep in mind, in Conquest, before we've gotten prospect packs, so the, we could see a lot of resupply of these prospect packs through inning programs, through Conquest, through event rewards, stuff like that. So these prices may go down significantly in the future. But as it stands right now, week one, this prospect collection is going to cost you right around 300k, like I said, and you're not really getting anything in return. But you do need 19 of these. A lot of these base guys are not that expensive, and the prospect set two cards are actually a little bit cheaper right now as well because they were just released as a pack in the last conquest. Home Run Derby collection. This one is equally as painful in terms of stubs, but it's maybe the best collection to do out of the three worst ones. Uh, that we're talking about at the end of the video because the cards that you get are actually pretty good at least in terms of hitting they're usable cards unlike uh, postseason and unlike prospects so 
Even though this one is really expensive, it's probably still worth. You only need 10 of these because you just need the Ken Griffey Jr. to lock in for Mike Trout. The main reason this collection sucks so much to lock in these cards long term is that we're for sure getting a better Ken Griffey Jr. down the line at some point and you can't use both. So for this home run derby collection, you're going to want to get these six base cards. This will cost you right around 75k as it stands right now and then you're going to need four of these rare tier cards. Uh, they're selling anywhere between 70k and 100k right now. In terms of like locking in the most in-game cards, uh, Robinson Cano and Cal Ripken Jr. are probably necessary. They're like the best in-game cards, closest to in-game cards that you can get from this collection. Uh, Pete Alonso as well, although first base is a very deep position. So overall, this home run derby collection is going to cost you 400 to 500k stubs. Uh, but you get a little bit better cards in return than the prospect collection. And the last voucher we're going to talk about is the postseason voucher. This is the only one where I'm comfortable to say you should probably avoid this collection at all costs. If at all possible, you should absolutely not do this collection. You need 15. There's not that many postseason cards in the game right now. Um, I imagine they'll add more as time goes on. But this is one of the most expensive collections as it stands. Uh, because a lot of these gold cards and some of the lower tier diamonds are no longer obtainable in the game like uh, Johnny Damon Andrew Jones were like season one pennant race rewards for ranked seasons So they're selling for like 30k each for gold cards, which is just completely insane All of these postseason cards have absolutely spiked in price Christy Mathewson was selling for less than 10k before the collection dropped now. He's at 64k so this collection is probably going to cost you three, four, five hundred k to do, and the cards that you get in return aren't even usable really at all compared to some of the in-game options we have. This is by far the least efficient collection in terms of how much it costs and what you get in return as far as the power level of cards. So avoid the postseason collection at all costs if you can. And to wrap up the video, we are now on the main account where I collected Mike Trout day one, and I'm going to show you what I decided to do with my stubs. Now I had prepared a lot. I had about 800k in cash when the collection dropped on top of the cards I had prepared with and now I'm at one and a half million. So I had more than I needed. But you can see I skipped tops now obviously because I wanted him day one. You can't do tops now right now. I skipped postseason as I said. That's the number one collection to avoid if you can and I actually did not do the home run derby collection either. I had also already knocked out stage one and two for all of the team affinities as they came out. I did all 30 and the Players League and the Prospects collection I had done much earlier in the year just for content because I wanted to have the card. So I actually paid a very high price for each of these two here, Wander Franco and Blake Snell, but I had already had them done earlier in the year, so that was very nice for me. Just to show you guys, here are the signature series that I locked in. I'll be doing this for Prime and Award Series as well. Obviously, I locked in Edwin Encarnacion. He was free. I locked in Joe Torre because I was already doing his prestige. Same with Larry Walker. Uh, Hal Newhauser came from the XP reward path. I did Mariano Rivera's prestige, so he's locked in. He's locked in. Uh, Craig Biggio from the Mickey Mantle collection, and Jimmy Rollins. I'm planning on doing his prestige as well, so he's locked in. Uh, if I hadn't prestige cards, I probably would have locked in Chapman and Hamels. I think they're very good. Everyone knows Chapman is good, but Hamels has been one of my better pitchers as well. I also would have considered locking in uh, Greg Maddox if I had him, probably because I'm going to use him all year. I also didn't do Jackie Robinson because I was lazy, so some of you guys will have the edge up on me on this one. So that's an extra free sig that you probably have that I did not have. For Prime, I locked in pretty much all the cards we talked about when I went over the collection. Uh, Mark Reynolds was free. Denny Martinez, Johnny Cueto, cheaper options, Kingman Rodney, and Hernandez from the Ducks on the Pond pack. I had grinded Roy Oswalt and Joe Carter's prestiges, so they were already locked in. Uh, Ken Griffey, and then I locked in Sandoval because I think he's in game. Uh, Ellsbury is working on the prestige, Roberts as well, so I got away with a lot of prestiges. Like I said, when, the first time we went over this category though, if I didn't have all these prestige cards already locked in, I probably would have targeted Rob Dibble, would have been locked in for sure. Jake McGee as well, just a good lefty reliever, good card to lock in, I think. And I would have stayed away, Zach Britton as well. And I would have stayed away and sold the cards we talked about staying away from. Juan Pierre, Shin Su Chu, Brian Dozier, Yu Darvish, Dellen Betances. All event rewards or X-World Series rewards. 
and there's a reason they're not locked in because that's the most efficient. And just to show you the awards that I locked in, tried to stay cheap, tried to stay towards prestigious or in-game cards, and tried to stay away from event World Series and 12 and OBR rewards. Practiced what we preached. Locked in Corey Seager, locked in Shane Victorino because I already did his prestige. Daniel Murphy, Salvador Perez, Zach Grinke, Andrew McCutcheon from the Ducks on the Pond packs, um, Jason Hayward just was one of the cheaper options and I still needed some at the end. Weeders I think is debatably an in-game catcher so I locked him in. Blackman was just one of the cheaper options. Did not lock in Molitor because he's selling for like 40k, I don't think that's worth it. Had Felix Hernandez locked in because I am working on his prestige. Uh, did not lock in Saberhagen, did not lock in Bryant, and uh, did not lock in Mike Scott. But yeah, we ended up with 15 of them here. I also did not lock in Ber Ernie Banks, but I'm planning on buying him anyway. Uh, and I'm not working on David Ortiz prestige or Stan Musial's prestige at the moment, which is why they are not there. But once again, if you're going to work on them, make sure you're locking them in and double dipping. So that is going to wrap it up for the video. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Hopefully it was detailed enough. If you have any questions at all, drop them in the comments. I'll do my best to respond to them. How are you guys attacking this Mike Trout collection? Are you trying to do it quickly and efficiently? Are you trying to wait it out and do it for cheap? Let me know what your plan is. Uh, I'm excited to be using him. Keep in mind he can be prestige, so technically the sooner the better, but no rush. <laughs> all in all, I would say this collection, depending on how much you've grinded the free stuff, this collection could cost you as little as about 2.2 million as it stands right now. And if you haven't grinded at all, this collection could be pushing closer to 4 or 5 million stubs. So keep that in mind. Is it worth it? that's the topic i'll be going over in another video but i appreciate you guys watching this one hopefully it helped y'all appreciate all the love and support you guys have given me this year it truly means the world to me to have had the uptick in views and subscribers that i've had this year thank you guys so much take care i'll see you in the next one peace